good evening everyone i welcome you all to lecture 3 about organisms and population so we know that if we talk about ecosystem we have different ecological levels and starting from the organism we have population then we have community and then we have ecosystem so the study of ecology encompasses levels of organization that proceed from the individual level that is from the level of organism to the population then to the community and finally to the ecosystem this diagram here itself represents what is the difference between a organism population community and an ecosystem so we may see that at the organism level level we talk about the individual and at the population level we talk about the organisms of the same like uh, organisms of the same species that are present in a common area then in the community level we talk about the interactions between the different population and in the ecosystem at the level of ecosystem we talk about the interaction between the different communities uh, so in the last lecture also we discussed what is population so just for the uh, quick revision uh, a population is a group of individuals of single species that live in the same general area members of a population since they belong to the same species they are living in a same area they rely on the same resources and they are influenced by similar environmental factors and they are likely to interbreed and interact with each other populations are basic are often described by their boundaries and size uh, because uh, because the organism of the same species may live in different different areas but the population will be defined by their boundaries and the size the number of individuals living within those boundaries so when we talk about the population we talk about the demography of the population so what is a demography demography is a statistical study of a population for example the density distribution and rate of the growth of population and which in turn is dependent on factors such as the mortality pattern and age distribution within the population so in the last class also we discussed about the age distribution pattern which is described by the age pyramids we see there are different kinds of age pyramid expanding then there are one which are stable then there are one which are constricting so these factors define the uh, these factors and the density distribution and rate rate of the growth of the population all are, comes under the category of demography the density of a population as discussed in the last class also is the number of individuals per unit area or we can say per unit volume for example if i culture e coli which is a bacteria if i culture e coli in a test tube and so we can, we may define e coli a number of e coli in the terms of density that these numbers of bacteria per ml so the number of e coli bacteria per ml will be the density of the e coli in that test tube this beside density the other important factor is the dispersion so dispersion is the pattern of spacing among individuals within the boundaries of the population that how different individuals within a population within the set limit or within the boundary of the population how different individuals are uh, are spaced among uh, so how these individuals are spaced so what is the spacing among these individuals within the boundaries of the population is defined by the factor which is known as the dispersion so density is of a population is not a constant parameter it is a dynamic perspective and it is not a static property density of a population may change as the number of individuals changes in the population so the number of individuals may be added to a population or they may be removed from a population so there are various factors that may con contribute to the addition or the removal of the individuals from the population leading to the changes in the population density so some of these factors are mentioned in this figure we can say that the birth these factors are birth immigration death and emigration so the birth and immigration adds to the population while the death and emigration remove individuals from the population so we will study these factors one by one so addition occurs through birth which include all forms of the reproduction 
and the second factor that contributes to the addition of individuals within the population is the immigration that is the influx of new new individuals from the other areas so whenever the new individuals move to move into the population from the other areas the process is known as the immigration so both birth and the immigration contributes to the addition of new individuals within the population thus affecting the density of the population leading to the increase in the density of the population the factors that remove individuals from a population are the first one is death that is defined by the mortality that is the number of individuals that die within the population the second is the emigration which is opposite of the immigration that is the influx of the individuals from the population to the new area where immigration on the one hand involves the influx of the individuals from new area to the population about which we are talking the if emigration on the other hand is a movement of individuals out of the population into another locations so basically if i talk about the population density it uh, we can clearly say that the immigration birth rate which is represented by the natality adds to the population density while emigration and the mortality which is uh, the death rate leads to the removal of the individuals from the population thus thus decreasing the population density so if i talk about the population which has a population density of n at time t then its density at time t plus 1 would be the number of individuals uh, that ha has been added through the immigration and birth minus the number of individuals that has died or that has been removed from the population as a result of death or mortality and emigration so if n is a population density at time t then its density at time t plus 1 would be the initial population plus the number of individuals that are added to the population minus the number of individuals that remove from the population or that move out from the population as a result of death and emigration so this is how we can define the population density at different time points by knowing the birth rate death rate number of individuals that have migrated into the population and the number of individuals that have migrated out of the population so as i talk about a term dispersion in the first slide so dispersion is a pattern of spacing among individuals within the boundaries of the population so this dispersion can be of different types so within a population's geographic range which is defined mainly defined by the boundaries of the population local densities may differ substantially so it is not always like the density within a population is always constant everywhere the density may also differ within the boundaries creating contrasting patterns of dispersion so this is what actually dispersion is dispersion tells us about how the population how the individuals within the population are actually spaced among themselves leading to the differences in the density of the individuals within the population itself so differences in the local density are among the most important characteristics of a population ecologist to study and uh, since it provides the insight into the environmental associations and social interactions of individuals in the population this is obvious because wherever we would find better environmental conditions wherever we would find better social interactions obviously the individuals would tend to localize more there so basically the differences in the local density is also a very important characteristic because this allows us to know about the population the ecology of the population because it provides the insights about the environmental associations that uh, like what are the regions that are very favorable the environmental conditions that are favorable for a particular population and the social interactions of individuals in the population so the population dispersion pattern may be of three different types the first one is clumped the second is uniform and the third one is the random population distribution dispersion 
so we will study each of these one by one starting with the clumped population dispersion pattern so clumped dispersion is the most common pattern of dispersion and as the name suggests in this the individuals clump or aggregate in the patches so for example if i talk about the plants and fungi they are often clumped where soil conditions and other environmental factors favor germination if i talk about the mushrooms we know mushrooms usually clump form clumps or aggregate over the wood logs that are moist so in similarly insects and salamanders may be clumped under the same log because of the higher humidity there so this is how clumping pattern is basically uh, this is how clumping dispersion takes place so individuals of individuals within the population aggregates in patches and this is due to the fact that these individuals from clump wherever they find the suitable conditions for their survival clumping of animals may also be associated not only with the survival but with the mating behavior for example may flies that survive only a day or a two as mating adults uh, so since they survive only for uh, for maybe more than not more than two days therefore they often swarm in great numbers a behavior that increases their chance of mating because this is obvious if they have to like if they are able to survive only for a day or a two and then to if they fly too far from their mating partners then it will be difficult for them to find the chances of mate uh, like to find the chance where they can mate so therefore in order to increase their chance of mating these flies usually fly in great numbers and usually try to remain in close association with their mating partners so that they can increase their chance of mating the next uh, uh, obvious reason may be it can increase the effectiveness of predation or vice versa for the defense so forming groups may also increase the effectiveness of the predation or it may also increase the effectiveness of defense for example if i talk about a flock of birds it is more likely uh, that than a single bird to warn of a potential attack so therefore in order to be feel more protected to have more uh, like in order to be have more effective defense mechanism these organisms tend to remain in close association with each other forming clumps on the other hand these uh, there are wolves like pack of wolves that may act as a, like that may remain in clumps as a part of increasing the effectiveness of predation so therefore forming groups may also increases the effectiveness of predation or defense so these are some of the reasons that why most of the individuals within the population or why most of the population actually favor clumped dispersion and it is the most common pattern within the in which individuals aggregate in the patches so the figure here represents how the clump dispersion will look we can see that there are different clumps that are formed within the population and example uh, maybe that the sea stars group together where the food is abundant so based on the depend like availability of the food the environmental condition that allows better survival or the conditions that allow better mating be uh, that may be associated with the mating behavior or for the effectiveness of the predation or defense the uh, these organisms usually try to remain in the form of clumps and these individuals for usually occur in the clump dispersion pattern within the population the next dispersion pattern is a uniform dispersion pattern as the name suggests uniform means evenly spaced so a uniform or evenly spaced pattern of dispersion may result from direct interactions between individuals in the population so for example why would there will be a uniform space when a single when one individual would not allow to enter someone in their territory so some plants for example secrete chemicals that inhibit the germination and growth of nearby individuals that could compete for the resources and therefore 
in such cases the other plants would definitely would not be able to grow in their vicinity and would try to grow in the place where the where these plants are absent the chemical secreting plants are absent so therefore forming a uniform or evenly spaced pattern within the population animals often exhibit uniform dispersion as a result of antagonistic social interactions antagonistic means uh, like opposite to each other so they have antagonistic social interactions such as territoriality that is the ability to form the territory the defense of a bounded physical space against encroachment by the other individuals so this pattern or this behavior is commonly seen in animals where the individuals of the same like the ones which are placed like uh, individual would not allow any other or different individual to enter in the territory and to perform the actions uniform patterns are however rarer than the clumped patterns as we see that the clumped patterns are more common as they have a very like these as the clumped pattern offer many advantages but the uniform patterns are uh, found but they are rarer than the clumped patterns so this is an example of the uniform pattern so we can see if i look at this pattern the individuals are uniformly spaced and example the birds nesting on the small island so such as these king penguins in the falkland islands near the southern tip of the south america often exhibit uniform spacing and this is this uniform spacing is maintained by the aggressive interactions between the neighbors so these penguins uh, do not try to interact with the neighbors or their interaction with the neighbors is very aggressive therefore they try to maintain a uniform distance from each other they try to maintain some distance from each other have resulting in a uniform pattern distribution the next is the random dispersion so name itself tells that the individuals are randomly dispersed within the population and predictable spacing is there the position of each individual in a population is independent of the other individuals this pattern occurs in the absence of strong like when would this pattern occur obviously when the individuals when the neighboring individuals or the other individuals the presence or abs, their presence or absence do not affect my presence or absence so therefore the, whenever their this pattern usually occurs in the absence of a strong attraction or repulsion among the individuals or where key physical or chemical factors are relatively constant across the study area therefore resources are such, are in such abundance that all of these individuals wherever they are present they may utilize those those resources so in such cases there would be a random dispersion uh, plants established by wind blown seeds such as dandelions may be randomly distributed in a fairly uniform habitat so that uh, because each of these have the equal chance to grow everywhere and uh, therefore they do not have any major attraction or repulsion from the individuals uh, that are present in the vicinity and therefore they can be present randomly random patterns are there are however not as common in nature as one might expect because most population show a, show at least a tendency to work towards the clumped distribution so this random patter, pattern as it seems to be more common but actually in reality it is not that common as that of the clumped dispersion so this is an example of random distribution random dispersion as i told that many plants such as these dandelions grow from the wind blown seeds that land at uh, randomly and then they later germinate so therefore there is no particular dispersion pattern that we can found the individuals are randomly dispersed and the position of each individual in a population is independent of the other individual so this was about the dispersion the next is demographics so as i mentioned that the factors that influence the density population density and dispersion pattern that is the ecological needs of a species structure of the environment the interactions among the individuals within the population also influence the other characteristics of the population 
so demography is the study of vital statistics of population and how it changes over the time so demographics can be studied by constructing a table which is known as a life table this life table actually represents the age specific summaries of the survival pattern of a population usually this life table is used commonly used by the people who make the insurance policies life insurance policies so on the basis of the life table that represents the age specific summaries of the survival pattern of a population it gives us an idea about how the population is going to change over the time some of the data in the life table can also be expressed in the form of a graph which is known as the survivorship graph that tells us how with the increase in the age the survival of the particular population is affected like there might be some individuals some population that have the chances of uh, that have the chances where the where young individuals are difficult to survive while on the other hand there might be some other population in which the older age individuals within the populations are difficult face difficulty in surviving so basically all this is expressed in the survivorship graph so survivorship graph is a plot of the proportion of numbers in a cohort still alive at each age so it is basically a graph that represents the number of individuals number of proportion of numbers in a cohort that is still alive at each age so this is the survivorship graph which is shown in this figure and we can see that the excess excess represents a percentage of maximum life span so considering the percentage of maximum life span is 100 so and the number of survivors are represented on the y axis in the form of log scale we can see that there are three types of survivorship graphs the one in which the initially for the for a particular period of time the life Uh, the number of survivors remain constant and then start declining the other one is uh, on the on the other hand is when the young individuals the one at the younger age survive have less chances of survival but as the age proceeds their chances of survival or the number of survivors remain constant so based on these uh, based on this the survivorship graph can be represented in three types the type 1 curve which is a flat at the start reflecting low death rates during the early and middle life and then starts dropping steeply as the death rate increases among the older age groups so this is the very common survivorship graph which we are very familiar of since in humans also we found a similar pattern where the individuals of young age or the middle age have higher chances of survival as compared to the individuals of the older age so many large animals including humans that produce few offspring exhibit this kind of curve since uh, it is very important also since the individuals or the larger animals in, including humans they produces very like few of springs as compared to the indi- uh, as compared to the smaller animals so since only they have few of like since they reproduce or since they produce few of of springs therefore it is very important that their survival should be that they should be the survival so therefore this type of curve is basically represented by the larger mammals including humans and uh, that produces the few, few offspring and uh, the second type of curve if i compare it with the type 3 curve so it is just opposite of the type 1 curve so type 3 curve drops sharply at the start reflecting very high death rates for the young but it flattens out as death rate decline for those few individuals that that are able to survive in the early period of their life so this type of curve is usually associated with or offspring organisms that produces very large number of offspring that provide little or no care such as long lived plants many fishes and most marine invertebrates so these individuals or sorry these so these organisms produces large number of number of offspring but since they do not provide care to all of them many of them die 
or they have the chances of dying at the early age and few of them that survive uh, have a higher chances of survival till the old age the next is the type 2 curve and these curves are the intermediate with a constant death rate over the organism's life span and these kind of curves occur in these kind of survivorship curves occurs in some other rodents various invertebrates lizards and some annual plants so these are the three different kinds of the survivorship curves that uh, we are familiar uh, that represents that actually beyond this tells a lot about the population that follows these survivorship curves for example one of the properties that i told that the type 1 curve is usually followed by the individuals that produces the very few offsprings so they have to take care of these offsprings in order to maintain their generations in order to maintain their species so therefore the chances of survival of these organisms in the early stage is high most of the organisms in the early stage survive while the ones they reach after a certain age at the older ages the number of individuals decreases while if, if i talk about the ones which produces large number of offsprings these uh, population or these species these organisms are not able to handle these large number of offsprings at an early age and therefore most of the organisms most of the uh, uh, offsprings die at an early age and few of them survive till their old age while there are certain individual uh, certain organisms that have a constant death rate among all over their life span and uh, for example the rodents and the invertebrates so the growth within the population is described by the growth models and these growth models are made based on the observation and the natural selection principles so based on the observation and natural selection principles ecologists have developed two working models for the growth in the pattern called semel parity where sem means once and paris means to bear or bring forth so the members of the population have only a single reproductive event in their lifetime so when the time of reproduction draws near the mature adult ceases to grow and expend all their energy in reproduction and then die so for example many insects such as winter moths annual plants such as zinnias follow this pattern of reproduction growth in other words similar parity is an adaptation to an unstable environment so in this case in this pattern of reproduction the organism produce uh, the members of the population have only a single reproductive event in their lifetime and therefore in order to do not miss that chance these organisms or the organ or the adults of this population basically see uh, sees their growth and expend all of their energy into bringing the new individual into the life into existence so uh, on contrast if i talk about the other pattern the other pattern is the hetero parity hetero means repeat so it the iteration that is the repetition so members of the population experience many reproductive events throughout their lifetime and therefore they continue to invest energy in their future survival and this increases their chances of reproducing again hetero parity is an adaptation to a stable environment when the offspring's chances of survival are relatively high so most of the vertebrates shrubs trees have this pattern of reproduction so the organism may be uh, so these different organisms follow different patterns of growth and based on these observations and the natural and considering the natural selection principles in mind ecologists have developed two working models as i mentioned so the first one is the exponential growth model so as the name suggests when, when the resources are unlimited and each species has the ability to realize fully its innate potential to grow in number as darwin observed by de while developing his theory of natural selection then the population grows in an exponential or geometric fashion so basically when 
so this is actually in reality is very difficult but if i talk about in terms of theory then the uh, this exponential growth will happen when the resources are unlimited and every individual of the population within the population has the innate potential to grow in number and therefore the population will grow exponentially or in a geometric fashion so if in a population of size n the birth rates not total number but per capita births are represented as b and death rate are represented as t then the increase or decrease in the number of in the population size during a unit period of time will be the uh, change in the number of change in the population with time can be represented by the number of birth the birth rate minus the death rate multiplied by the initial population considering b minus d that is the uh, birth rate minus the death rate as r we can simply represent that the change in the population or the increase or decrease in the population size during a unit period of time is equal to uh, r n so the r in this equation is called the intrinsic rate of natural increase and it is a very important parameter chosen for assessing the impacts of any biotic or abiotic factor on the population growth because if let's say the birth rate is high then definitely these biotic and the abiotic factors are favoring the growth of the population in that particular habitat but if the death rate is high that is the value of r is close to negative then we may say that the uh, abiotic or the biotic factors are actually impacting are having the negative impact on the population growth so the exponential growth curve is the, is a j shaped curve and the integral form of the equation if i take the integration of this equation the it can be represented as the population density after time t is equal to the population density at time 0 and r here represents the intrinsic rate of the natural increase that is b minus d and e is the base of the natural logarithm where t is the time period so the exponential growth curve is a j shaped curve and we can see that in this case the population grows exponentially from one generation to another generation so the curve has these different phases the first is the lag phase during this phase growth is slow because the population is small but once the population reaches to a number that it is sufficient to grow exponentially then exponential growth phase start and the growth is accelerating in this phase resulting in the higher number of offsprings in the every generation so in this case the population actually grows exponentially or in a geometric fashion and it is represented the the shape of the graph is a j shaped graph where the initial phase is a lag phase that represents the slow growth of the individual because in initially the size of the population is small but as the size reaches to a particular stage where it can grow exponentially the next phase is the exponential phase where the population is accelerating the growth is in the acceleration phase so there then there is a exponential growth and the ex equation of this exponential growth curve is uh, here represented as the population density at time t is equal to the population density at time 0 multiplied by the base of the natural logarithm to the power intrinsic rate of natural increase into the time period so but in order for the exponential growth to continue each member of the population has to have the unlimited resources but this is actually not popular uh, not possible in the real scenario but if i talk about the exponential growth to continue without any check so every member of the population should have the ability to utilize the resources and should have access to the unlimited resources plenty of room food shelter and any other requirement necessary to sustain growth must be available as the as uh, the uh, as uh, if any of these 
facilities or any of these resources are removed it may affect the growth of the individuals thereby affecting the next generation so but in reality environmental conditions prevent exponential growth eventually any further growth is impossible because the food supply runs out or the waste products begin to accumulate also as the population increases in size so do the effects of competition between the members predation parasites and the diseases so therefore in nature or in reality environmental conditions prevent the exponential growth of the population because we know that as the population will increase in the size it will affect the competition for the resources it will affect the competition between the members it may lead to predation parasites and diseases so this was about the exponential growth model the next model is the logistic growth model so the growth of laboratory populations of small animals such as beetles and crustaceans and of some microorganisms such as bacteria paramecium yeast fits into an s shaped curve fairly well under the conditions of limited resources so there is a difference between the exponential growth model and the logistic growth model exponential growth model talks about the growth of the individuals in the population when the resources are unlimited and every individual within the population has an access to a limited resource and every individual fully uh, utilize their potential to uh, reproduce so but if i talk about the uh, limited resources then under limited conditions organisms or the laboratory populations fit into an s shaped curve which is represented into the logistic growth model so these populations are grown in a constant environment that like the predators and competing species and thereby it may reduce the growth of populations conditions that rarely occur in nature so basically we know that in natural habitat organisms or the population has to face the predation competition from the other species but if i grow them in the laboratory condition these uh, organisms like predators competitor species that may in reality reduce the growth of the population so this condition is also very rare in nature that we talk about in logistic growth model but logistic growth model still talks about the condition when the resources are limited the logistic model therefore assumes that population adjust in instantaneously to growth and approach carrying capacity smoothly in reality there is often a delay before the negative effects of an increasing population are realized so basically the logistic model as population instant uh, like population adjust itself instantaneously to the growth and therefore but actually in reality there is there are some negative effects that before the like before the population realize the negative effects of an increasing population there is a delay also the assumption also the logistic growth model assume that in addition to the assumption that uh, the logistic growth model another assumption that regardless of the population density each individual added to a population has the same negative effect on a population growth rate however if i talk about the reality some population show any effect L effect is the effect which, uh, which suggests that the individuals may have a more difficult time surviving or reproducing if the population size is too small. So, where on one hand the logistic growth model assumes that every individual that is added into the population have a negative effect, the in reality there are some populations that show L effect where the size of the population, if it is too small, it may have defeat the in population the individuals of the population may face difficulty in surviving and in reproduction so these are the two assumptions that actually do not work exactly in reality so based on these assumptions logistic growth model has been proposed so this type of growth curve is a sigmoidal or s shaped curve and it is it has different phases the first is a lag phase we know that during the lag phase the growth is small because the population is small 
then there comes the exponential phase where the growth is accelerating and the individuals have the plenty of resources to utilize but once since we, in the logistic growth model we talk about the limited resources so once these resources are utilized the growth slow down and this is known as the deceleration phase then there is a stable equilibrium phase during which there is a little if any growth because birth and death rates are almost equal so the growth becomes stable the there the stable equilibrium phase is attained and uh, these are the different phases which are present which are there in the sigmoidal or the s shaped curve and represented by the lag phase exponential growth phase deceleration and the stable equilibrium phase so now how what is the equation for the logistic growth model so because a population has repro repeated reproductive events we need to consider growth as a function of change in time so considering the growth as a function of change in time we may represent it as delta n by delta t is equal to r n so if the change in time is very small then we can uh, definitely turn it into the differential calculus and the instantaneous population growth can be defined as dn by dt is equal to rn this portion of the equation applies to the first two phases of the growth that is the lag phase and the exponential growth phase here also we do not expect that the exponential growth to continue following exponential growth a population is expected to enter a deceleration phase and then a stable equilibrium of the logistic growth so once it reaches to the exponential phase now the population is at the carrying capacity of the environment so what is a carrying capacity the environmental carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals of a given species the environment can support beyond that the environment cannot support more individuals of that species so depending on the resources that are available in the environment every environment have a carrying capacity for a particular uh, for a particular species and the maximum number of individuals of a given species that the environment can support is known as the carrying capacity and it is denoted by a k so to our equation about the growth for further growth conditions for growth under conditions of exponential growth we can add the term carrying capacity and we can use the equation k minus n divided by k so therefore the overall equation or the uh, total calcul population growth as the time passes we can use the formula as n by t is equal to rn into k minus n by k so n is where n is the population size n by t is the change in the population size r is the rate of natural increase that we talked in the uh, while we were discussing about the uh, while we were discussing about the exponential growth model and uh, k is the carrying capacity k minus n by k is the effect of carrying capacity on the population growth so since our environment can afford to afford a limited number of individuals of a particular species so the maximum number of individuals that environment can support is represented by its carrying capacity and this carrying capacity affects the growth of the population so considering this into our equation we can say that the final equation for the population growth as the time passes is represented by n by t is equal to r into n in uh, multiplied by the Uh, effect of carrying capacity and population growth that is k minus n divided by k so this was about the logistic growth model now we will talk about the life stream variation so we know that uh, individuals some individuals have the ability to reproduce more than once while there are individuals where uh, that have the ability to reproduce only once in their lifetime so the traits that affects an organism schedule of reproduction and survival make up its life history a life history entails three main variables these variables include firstly when the reproduction begins or the age at first reproduction or age at the maturity so it, uh, it the life history is dependent on the three variables the first one is the maturity age second is how often the organism reproduces and the third one is the how many offsprings are produced per reproduce reproductive episode 
so these are the three different variables that defines the life history so life history as i mentioned is a trait that affects an organism schedule of reproduction and survival so the selection for the traits that are sensitive to a population density and are favored at high densities is known as the key selection or it is known as the density dependent selection while if i talk about the selection for the traits that maximize reproductive success in uncrowded environment that is in low densities is called the r selection or density independent selection these names follow for the variables of the logistic equation k selection is said to operate in populations living at the density near the limit imposed by their resources that is the carrying capacity of k where competition among individuals is stronger so basically this k selection and r selection the name arises from the words which we used earlier that is the carrying capacity k so k selection where the traits are sensitive to population density and are favored at high densities is known as the k selection so it is said to operate in a population that are living at a density near the limit imposed by their resources that is the population that is that has reached or is about to reach their carrying capacity and where the competition definitely obviously when the population has reached or is about to reach near their carrying capacity the competition among the individuals will be stronger so the k selection is said to operate in populations living at a density near the limit imposed by their resources the carrying capacity k where competition among individuals is stronger while if i talk about in contrast if i talk about the r selection so r selection is said to maximize the r that is the per capita rate of increase since r represents the rate of increase that is b minus t and occurs that occurs in the environment in which the population densities are well below their carrying capacity or individuals face little competition so r selection works when the population is has not reached or is beyond their like has not reached and is well below their carrying capacity or there is a very little competition between the individuals of the species such conditions are often found in disturbed habitats which growing in an abundant agriculture field are an example of r selected organisms so this case selection and r selection is used by the ecologist and ecologist suggest that the life history trait of organisms have evolved in relation to the constraints imposed by the abiotic and biotic components of the habitat in which they live and the evolution of life history traits in different species is currently an important area of research being conducted by the ecologist so this was about the uh, this was all about what is the importance of case selection and r selection when do case selection operates and when do r selection operates so we get to know that case selection operates when the population has already reached or is near to their uh, carrying capacity while the r selection operates when the population is well beyond its carrying capacity or the individuals are facing little competition so these are the selection traits or these are the traits life traits that a population follow and the ecologist suggest that the life history of traits of organism have evolved in relation to the constraint that are imposed by both the abiotic components and the and the biotic components of the habitat so abiotic components may be the availability of the soil water sunlight temperature which is available while the biotic components that may affect or that may pose the some constraints on the uh, survival or the history trait of organism may include the competition predation or the or or different kinds of interactions that occur between the different individuals of the species so this was uh, and finally evolution of life history traits in different species is currently an important area of research being conducted by the ecologist in order to understand how the population because this life history trait basically affects all is talked about all the constraints that is faced by the individuals of the population due to the biotic and abiotic components and thereby affecting their growth therefore it is an important parameter and in order to understand the life history traits in different species 
it is an important area of research that is being conducted by the ecologist. So with this, I would like to end today's session. In the next session, we would take up different interactions that are that is present in between the organisms of the different population or organisms within the same population. Thanks a lot.